Music, it's a part of our everyday lives, yet the way we consume music has changed dramatically over time. From sheet music, vinyl, cassette, compact disc and MP3s, music consumption, distribution and production has been constantly evolving. In recent years, the digitisation of music has enabled us to listen to our vast collections pretty much anywhere we like. We can be in the car, on a train or running through a park. We can anywhere. Let's have a look at digitisation from past to present. Your typical DJ from the 1970s would use vinyl, an analogue format. Vinyl would have been selected and purchased from a record store. In these times, consideration was needed on travelling from gig to gig, as vinyl, depending on how many records you would want to play in the night, can get heavy. Vinyl restricted you to the use of record players, generally set up in a home or club. However, today's DJ isn't limited to vinyl. Today's DJ can acquire tracks instantaneously online and mix MP3s using programs such as Tractor or Ableton. The digitisation of music means there is a possibility for a massive library at the DJ's fingertips. No need to lug those records around town. The mobility of this hardware also makes it easier for alternate listening spaces such as outdoor bush locations or pop-up city ones. Although vinyl has that particular sound that is hard to replicate and is still loved by many, the digitisation of music has given greater mobility, accessibility and a range of music selection for today's digital world. So what are people doing with digitisation? The current digital generation is immersed in the remix culture, borrowing from the past to create something new. Let's have a look at a conversation between two DJs making a track, wanting to sample Rapper's Delight. Yeah, Rapper's Delight. He did, he did. The only thing is though, um, you know, like to do it without getting any fines or anything, we have to pay copyright fees. And, what do you mean? Well, because it's copyrighted material. So it means that we can't use it legally without paying like thousands and thousands of dollars to use it. Oh, yeah. what did we just use it? Well, we could. We could just use it and hope to not be caught, but the big media companies are pretty good at tracking that down and um, the fines would be bigger than what it is to pay for the copyright fees. But, but this is stupid. How did Grandmaster Flash do it? Yeah, well, back in them days when he did it, uh, the hip-hop culture was all about sampling and the laws weren't there to, to stop people from doing it um, at that time. But what's happening to our to our creativity? I mean, everyone is freaking, you know, remixing music that, these days. Yeah, I know. That's right. And, you know, everything is a remix. Everything's built on something from the past. And I think it's the copyright laws are just ridiculous. But it's actually the life of the author and them, 75 years. So we can basically only legally mix something that's like from the 1920s. Oh, great. <laughs> I know. It's stupid, isn't it? Bring in some Mozart. I know. <laughs> so, yeah. Or we wait until we are really old and really grey. Yeah, that's right. And mix our own song then. I oh, know. It's ridiculous. The only other thing we could do is um, search um, uh, music that's under Creative Commons licensing. Have uh -huh. you heard of that? So what it means is people, you know, create music to... Um, for others to freely download and remix and do it the, the way they will, most of the time just crediting the author. So there's a few websites I know that we can go to and we can check out to see if there's some beats there that we might want to use.